<laughs> uh, I'm Sam Garrett for the Grassroots Football Show on 93.7 Express FM and uh, I'm joined by Portsmouth Chairman Ian McGuinness. How are we, Ian? Well, I can confirm it is good evening because you it's didn't seem to here. know. Yeah, but maybe around the world. Uh, well, hello, whoever's listening. I'm fine, thanks. Really good. Came down tonight, watched the uh, academy play on Fratton Park. Don't do that very often. Against a local club, Moneyfields, that I used to play against in the local leagues when I was trumping around the place. That was a good night, wasn't it? Yeah. Nearly um, a thousand people here to watch. Yeah. Good atmosphere. 948 to be precise. Go. Very yeah. good. And uh, Portsmouth won 12 0 tonight against Moneyfields. Yeah. Uh, they will either play Barton Rovers or Stevenage yeah. in the second round proper, which will be played here at Fratton Park. Yeah, Fratton Park. And I really think that we're playing Stevenage, of course, next Saturday ourselves the from the first Cup. day yeah. on the FA Cup. So uh, let's hope we can beat them. And Could be a, a Pompey double against Stevenage. Yeah, that'd be great. I can't think of a better club to do it over. So uh, tonight, what impressed you most about the academy win? Oh, I think, um, you know, when, when you look at academies, I mean, not that I'm a football expert, obviously, but you're looking for two or three outstanding talents. And if you get two or three outstanding talents, then, you you know, that's really what the academy is all about. But uh, I think there were more than that out there tonight. I think there were a, a half a dozen outstanding candidates. And I thought, the, uh, I thought, funny enough, in the first 10, 15 minutes, that was very much like a first-team game, where we dominated possession like, almost mercilessly, didn't we? Yeah. And, and yet the goal came from a bit of a fluke, didn't it? came from a, a header of a defender in front of the goalkeeper to put the ball on the back of the net. And then they got a goal. Uh, that was disallowed, which I thought was a bit sad for them, really, to be truthful. Do you feel if that one had been allowed, would it be a different story? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think, to be fair, even the Moneyfield guys will tell you that they, they, they've come in and said, look, you know, we're Pompey supporters as well, and it, wasn't it fantastic to see some of those players out and the way they knocked the ball around. So, just an impressive game of football, great atmosphere, uh, great night. And, and more importantly, again, another one of those nights where, you, where I think everybody here feel, feels part of it, don't they? Exactly. I don't think there was a bad player tonight for Portsmouth. And Ben Close is a player that's been uh, named one of the best apprentices in the country. He got four goals tonight. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts on Ben? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, it, I, I mean, I don't think we have bad players in the academy, quite frankly. And, I mean, that was shown tonight against probably, what, a side that would have the sort of some of the cream or some of the next level down. And I think that, you know, like all young pros, it, it, you know, you, Ben, I'm sure, won't get carried away. Uh, playing with some other very good players around him, so he's not the only star on the team, so that might help. But I think there's a few of them. They've got really good futures ahead of them, don't you? Uh, I most certainly do. I cover the Pompey Academy games, all the home games, so I've watched them throughout last season, uh, throughout the season and last season, including that league win against Luton 4-2. So uh, yeah, yeah. I've been impressed mainly yeah. by Ben Close and uh, Jay Hyun Kim, fantastic little player. Yeah, he looks as if he's going to be uh, G Park Song, doesn't he? The second. Um, you know, so he, he did really surprise me the way he was. Uh, he's one of those sort of typical darty, you know, manoeuvrable. Very quick feet, and we heard, clever, we heard the gasps in the self stand as soon as he got his first touch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he looks special, doesn't he? Um, he certainly does. I think without being disrespectful to Moneyfields, I think you've got to see the guys playing against higher opposition to make a real judgment. But you have seen them play more than I have, certainly against higher opposition. So it'd be uh, not Moneyfields, only a, the Portsmouth yeah, Academy. Portsmouth Academy. It'd be, it'd be useful to see how we uh, progress against you know tougher competition, and certainly you'd expect that in the next round and from the rounds that progress after that, wouldn't you? They certainly did everything I expected they would tonight. I see them play uh, regularly at home, like I said. So uh, I'm very much pleased they got that result and. Uh, we're going back to uh, Brad Tarbuck as well, another strong player with a very strong future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think Brad um, and, uh, you know, obviously uh, we've got a centre-half with, with lots of long blonde hair who's quite a decent player as well. Jack Watmore. But yeah, I, mean, I know Jack. I mean, but I'm just trying to avoid him because there's too many <laughs> scouts around, you know. But the reality of life is that he reminds me a lot. I mean, some of the listeners will be old enough to remember a guy called Colin Henry who played for Blackburn Rovers for year after year after year. And he's actually a coach there. And he looks like he's double. <laughs> Somebody unkindly said here tonight, Shirley Temple. I think that was fair. But the reality of life, Jack's an outstanding talent. Uh, and I think that, 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 you know, Tarby's not far behind him. At such a young age, though, yeah. and he's the captain. Yeah, I know, but and didn't it show? Yeah, most I mean, certainly. See, see, one of the issues you've got at our level is in the second division. You know, you'd, you'd ask yourself the question, well, do you really want to breed people to come and play at second division level? And, the, and, and that's, a, that's, a not a, that's a non rhetorical question, really. But the truth of the matter is that um, where, where, where Jack does his thing is that in, even in training, 
he will he will actually kick lumps out of big Patrick Aguiman. He's got that physique <laughs> to go with his talent. Yeah. And that's what's what's crucial. So he, I think he can actually go all the way, hopefully with us. He certainly takes no prisoners, Jack Walmer. He's certainly got a very bright future, especially with Andy Orford mentoring him. And good and yeah, well if he gets Andy's tenacity in his left foot. Let's just hope he also gets a right foot because Andy didn't have one, did he? <laughs> you won't remember that. No, I'm too young. I'm only 20. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you need to be about 70 to remember Andy. <laughs> I don't think he's that old. Uh, poor Andy does a good job at Portsmouth. <laughs> and one thing Paul Hardyman said to me, the, the youth coach, he said, despite this very good performance, not one bad player, they don't have the most depth. But really, they've shown that they don't need the depth too much. Yeah, I remember talking to somebody years ago who came to see me in my usual day-to-day -day business. It was actually a, 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 a development coach at Bournemouth of all, of all sides and he said to me that typically the way a professional clubs look at, at, at football and, and, and the youth academy is that they very often know that one or two of them will make it and the rest probably won't no. and all of a sudden you've got a situation where you've got a couple of guys leading on another nine or, t or twelve players and you know, knowing that uh, you know, at some stage of the game they're just going to fall by the wayside we haven't got that here I was about to say I don't think Portsmouth have that problem they're brimming with talent quality rather than quantity isn't it and uh, I don't want to mention the, the team up the road they've got a good academy as well but Portsmouth are certainly getting there aren't they yeah well I think that Southampton I mean over the years have produced some great kids but I don't think the conveyor belt is all that uh, I think they're outstanding kitty right now it came from here in fact didn't it Oxley Chamberlain, yeah, and uh, his his father's a coach at the academy. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, no, I mean we've got to be pleased with what's going on. Uh, going now to the Portsmouth first team side of things, uh, how is the the takeover going since you took over back in April? How's uh, things progressing at the club? Well, you asked me on the day that I've just signed the club's audited accounts, which then go to the company's house for everybody to see exactly how they're going. And uh, the narrative I had to put on it had to reflect performance. And I think that we can say that it's gone very well. It, uh, without getting carried away, it's gone better than we could have expected. But we've got to expect more, and we've got to we've got to we've got to achieve more. We've got to do more. And when I say that, I'm talking about right across the board. I mean, most people are only really particularly interested in their team. Yeah. I think the team's just started to put a run together that reflects the, the quality of, of the team and the squad. Uh, I think probably had Guy had that flexibility in the squad from the start of the season, when we were perhaps a bit overcautious about budget, then we might have been at least another six points higher up the league. And I think we can look, you know, we can all think of six points we should have had. But that's 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 looking promising. I think off the pitch, it's quite important that uh, you know we, we, we make it, we, we, we bring the, the stadium that we've currently got into the 21st century by fixing leaks and holes in the roof and uh, and so on and so forth. And we certainly got a, a um, you know a reminder about exactly what work we've got to do after the uh, the deluge that was the Wickham game. Um, training facilities, we're, 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 we're out there looking and maybe even close to announcing something fairly exciting for a long-term training facility. That's important. And I've just listened to Micah all on the way in saying how he saved Portsmouth Football Club single-handedly. We're joking, Micah. <laughs> and talking about the commercial progress that we've made. You know, Tati, for example, the new screen. The screen and the ones in the concourse as well. And so on and so forth. And it's, it's you know, it's bit by bit, but it's solid and it's progressive. Progressing very gradually. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what you want. You don't just want to be all quick and guns blazing, just gradual progress. We couldn't afford to. Um, you know, we were cautious about the, the size of the squad. We can afford to be a bit less cautious, but nevertheless, still prudent. We knew that we had a major issue to, you know, make sure that the stadium made, you know, was made more. I mean, we've still got to get the, uh, the, the capacity issue sorted out, haven't we? So we've still got about another 2,000 bodies that we'd really like to get in. And if you take Saturday as an example, if things continue to get as exciting as they might be towards Christmas and the end of the year, we'll need every seat that we can get our hands on. And I've never heard that in League Two ever. No, unbelievable. I mean, I think we were, I think somebody said, I didn't actually check myself, that we were the third or fourth largest gate outside the Prem Premier League, outside the Championship, was it, on, on Saturday? Which is yeah. incredible. That's probably the Championship. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I mean, and to be fair, extra play department on Saturday. But what we're doing is we're still averaging gates across the board. Um, of 15 and a half to 15,600. That's just incredible. The fans in Portsmouth are certainly very, very loyal, and I don't think you could ever keep them away. No, I think what we... Do, well, I think that some of the previous owners were forcing them away. I think I, I would say that, but I think from our point of view, we're trying to do everything we possibly can uh, to make them keep coming. And, uh, and I think they do keep coming. And anybody was witness at this game was 
as tough as it was towards the end, you know, you just held on in the end there. Yeah, you can walk for that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> uh, too early, isn't it, to talk about the sort of progress where your aims are for Portsmouth's first team? Uh, not really. I think that um, this season. Uh, I mean, we talked about consolidation. I actually think, without being, you know, hopefully too arrogant, that we've, we've that we have consolidated both on the field and off the field. In as much as that, we didn't actually take this club over from ground level. We took it over from a bomb crater. So we're up there now at a level where uh, we're getting respect again back from the authorities in football, from other football clubs. Hopefully, from our supporters. It's the most important thing. And certainly, players want to come and play here. Um, and the staff and the management team are learning about each other off the field just as well as they are on the field. Uh, and we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other things that we'd like to do and move towards. So we, we have to be in or around the playoffs coming the end of the season and disappoint if we're not in them. Do you feel that's realistic? Will it happen? Yeah, I think it's realistic. With the current team? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Don't forget we've added a few people just recently yeah. and they've yet to be seen and certainly seen at their full capacity. And uh, and I think that, you know, if we got to the situation at Christmas where we were ahead of the budget financially, which we are considerably, if, if uh, we were able to understand the way forward and the total expenditure we needed to, to, to get back to standard capacity on the football ground and we needed to just be a little bit more relaxed about... Um, you know, sort of the weekly wages because yeah. we don't pay transfer fees, remember, or even signing on fees. Um, I think that the squad doesn't need much strength. But of course, that would be Guy's decision, and he would come and ask us. He's not shy, by the way. <laughs> he's a very nice man, but he's not shy saying, Can I have an island, please? As you probably heard. Yeah, he's very eager then. But uh, talking about Jed Wallace, just how crucial is he to the club going forward? Well, I mean, Jed's a quality player, isn't he? Um, and I think going forward, it depends when you mean. I mean, he's here anyway to the end of the season. And, and I mean, being one of our star players, I suppose we're allowed to say that, aren't we, really? Of course he's crucial. He, he sometimes, as he's proven, that he makes the difference, doesn't he, in a game between losing, winning. Against grown men, and he's only 19. Absolutely right. So, yeah, he's, he's one of those that you'd want to hang on to for the next 10 years. But it's like everything else, isn't it? We'll, 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 you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, I, I, I hope and I think it's really possible that if Jed feels he can actually fulfil his potential and talent at this football club, I think he'll stay. Fantastic. And uh, finally, what are your uh, next plans for the stadium with the addition of the, this concourse screens, or is that too early to speak about? Uh, yeah, you mustn't steal Micah's thunder because he's never got enough, has he? But uh, the reality of life after the screens, it's what appears on the screens on a regular basis. It's what appears on the big screen on a regular basis. Um, and I think Micah has always got 400 different new ideas. So, yeah, I think that look out for the next... Uh, for the next flash, as it were, really. As long as he stops featuring me in the cartoons in the programme, I'll be happy. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ian. That was Ian McGuinness for the Grassroots Football Show on 93.7 Express FM. Thank you. Great. Cheers. Yeah.